I'm going to head over to London where Ian Lee is standing by. Ian, you've been watching a number of stories worldwide for us, including this attack in Vienna. What can you tell us? Good morning, Emery. Europe is facing a wave of terror. Two brutal knife attacks have hit France in the past month and now overnight this deadly shooting in Austria. A massive manhunt is underway after gunmen opened fire in Vienna, killing at least four people and injuring 17. Police say multiple heavily armed terrorists were involved in the attack near a synagogue, though it's not clear that was the target. Eyewitnesses say the gunman fired at people outside cafes and restaurants. Police shot and killed one of the attackers shortly after. The interior minister says the dead gunman was an ISIS sympathizer. Security forces are now looking for at least one more person who they believe is heavily armed and dangerous, although authorities say up to four people could have carried out the attacks. Next to Nigeria, where the government is investigating the shooting of unarmed protesters in Lagos. At a press conference yesterday, the country's attorney general blamed, quote, hoodlums who were wearing military uniforms, but added it's too soon to tell if soldiers were actually involved. Demonstrators turned violent last month after witnesses say the military fired on peaceful protesters. This unrest in Nigeria initially began over the government's widely unpopular anti-robbery squad, but has since morphed into anger over police brutality, corruption, the economy, and abuse of state power. Next, we are tracking a hurricane that is swirling in the Caribbean. Central America is bracing for Eta, which is currently making landfall in Nicaragua. The powerful Category 4 storm is expected to bring widespread damage to the country with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. People are being told to hunker down in a safe space as officials prepare for nearly three feet of rain in parts of Central America. They're expecting landslides, flooding, and a storm surge up to 21 feet above normal tide. Forecasters predict the storm will hit Honduras, Guatemala, and, Guatemala and Belize before doing a U-turn heading back into the Caribbean on Saturday. Finally, we end in Sri Lanka, where villagers came to the rescue of 120 whales stranded on the beach Locals defied a coronavirus curfew to push and pull the pilot whales back into deeper water. Sailors from the Coast Guard and Navy eventually arrived to help with the rescue operation. A number of whales died before they could be saved. Scientists say they don't know why whales get stranded like this. In Amory, last September, hundreds of whales died off the coast of Australia in one of the largest strandings on record. And it really is a race against time to save them. And Hopefully, scientists can figure out the cause so they can prevent this sort of thing in the future. Yeah, that's always kind of sort of the confusing bit is figuring out why this sort of thing happens. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that they were able to save um, the whales that they could. Thank you, Ian.